Good morning, everyone. This week, we're going to be discussing the film Contagion. And in this lecture, I want to give you some background on the movie, um, a sense of its critical reception, and also some tools that you can use for when you talk about the movie in our course discussion. So let's take a look at the background of the movie. Um, Contagion was directed by Steven Soderbergh, who is, um, was famous prior to this for um, directing some other blockbuster hits. These included Ocean's 11, 12, and 13, uh, Traffic, and Aaron Brockovich. Contagion was released in 2011, and um, it was very well received by critics. Now the movie, as you're aware, explores the effects of a worldwide pandemic as individuals try to cope with loss and fear, and as officials seek to study, contain, and cure the disease. Um, and it explores this through a series of intersecting plot lines. Um, this movie features what we call an ensemble cast. Um, and what this means is that no one plot is prioritized over the other. So um, one of the ways that we see these intersecting plot lines, or some of these plot lines include um, the CDC, so the CDC's efforts and the US government's efforts to launch a public health campaign um, to treat the disease while at the same time developing a vaccine for the disease. The WHO's efforts um, to track the disease back to its original source. Um, our third intersecting plot is Alan Crumweedy, um, his coverage of the story as a blogger, a sort of questionable journalistic integrity, as his stories mainly deal in conspiracy theories um, and questionable science, even as he purports to be the voice of reason on the internet. And then we've got um, among um, these three plot lines, a fourth intersected series of plot lines, which are these individual stories. And these include the story of the Emhoff family, um, in particular, um, the surviving member of the family, Mitch, um, his efforts to make sense of the death of his wife and his son, while at the same time keeping his daughter Jory safe. Um, there's also the story of Dr. Ellis Cheever, who is directing the public health campaign um, while he also struggles to protect his own his own wife. Um, there's Dr. Ali Hextall, who's developing a new vaccine. And then there's Dr. Leonora Orantes, who is the um, WHO worker who is kidnapped by village officials in China um, as part of their effort to get the first dosage of the vaccine. The official genre of this movie is a thriller. Specifically, it's a disaster thriller. Um, but it's not really a typical disaster thriller. When we think of typical disaster thrillers, we oftentimes think of movies about man-made problems that spread out of control. And those movies tend to be a little bit far-fetched. But this movie features a virus that's not actually man-made, right? Although we could argue that it's indirectly man-made because of environmental um, changes. Um, moreover, the virus itself um, ends up being um, pretty random and sort of democratic in a way. We eventually discover that it follows predictable patterns, but it will strike anyone. And while you might argue that the response to this outbreak is man-made in the sense that the social fabric of society begins to fray, um, there are um, also ways in which the movie seeks to mitigate this. In particular, while it explores public hysteria, it tends to show that side by side with the very measured um, logical response of organizations like the CDC and the WHO as they go through a set of protocols for creating a public health response and then also for understanding, modeling, um, seeking to um, grow cells from the virus and then trying to find a vaccine for the virus. Um, in addition, as I mentioned, thrillers oftentimes are like fairly far-fetched, but this particular thriller doesn't seem that far-fetched. In part because, one, we know that pandemics happen historically, and in fact, we have um, explored pandemics in some of our readings. And one of the things that I want us to examine are the overlaps between contagion, the Decameron, and the Journal of the Plague Year. Um, now, the critical reception to this movie, as I mentioned, um, was very positive. Critics praised the movie for its documentary feel, as well as for the breadth and the accuracy of its information about public health. Um, in particular, in their 2011 article, The New Scientist um, praised the movie for its realism. And 
Um, I think they meant it in two ways. One, they praised the movie for the quality of the information presented. Um, in fact, a quote from this article reads, quote, although it is by no means flawlessly accurate, it's not a Nova documentary, Contagion has been well fact-checked compared to most science-y blockbusters, end quote. The New Scientist also praises the realistic portrayal of how the scientific process works in all of its messiness as it encounters its own setbacks, as well as politics and public perceptions. And here's another quote from the New Scientist. Quote, very few Hollywood productions realistically portray the process of science, both its successes and its frustrations, and this is what makes Contagion unique. And this praise appears to be, you know, well-founded. Um, the spread of the virus represented in Contagion um, seems to mirror the outbreak and pathways of the H1N1 swine flu virus in 2009. And um, at least one scientist has also said it was similar to the Nipah virus from Malaysia um, in the late 1990s, which spread from pigs to farmers. So here are some of the things that I want us to think about in our discussion of this movie. Um, one, what are the similarities and differences between the public health emergency in Contagion versus the ones represented in the Decameron and the Journal of the Plague Year? You know, do you see a similar loss of social fabric? Um, do you see similarities in terms of public health measures in the absence of an effective vaccine or an effective treatment? Do you see similar moments of local heroism? And do you think that rumor plays the same role? Um, another question we can examine is how does the movie represent the negotiations between medicine and politics, between good science versus quackery, and between selfishness versus selflessness? And three, how does the movie visually represent the spread of disease? Now, when it comes to talking about the movie on our discussion board, here's a little bit of advice. First of all, um, when you're discussing quotations from the movie, you're going to probably take the same approach that you would um, when discussing um, written text. That is that um, the same kinds of analytic tools that we, used for, that we use for discussing books will also apply to this movie. So we can think about things like, you know, looking for metaphors, looking for word choice, um, looking for structures and repetitions in terms of what people are saying. But in addition to that, we have other analytic tools and we have other things that we're going to be looking out for. Because when you examine a movie, one of the things that you're examining is um, the um, visual aspects of the film and how they get put together. Um, this includes the following. One is editing choices. And by editing choices, here's some things I want you to think about. Um, does a scene show one point of view or does it show multiple points of view? Does a scene show only people? Does the sheen, scene show objects? Does it show um, you know, parts of a person? Um, are the shots wide sequence in the sense of showing really broad landscapes or wide segments of the population? Or are they up close? Is this a movie that tends to only have scenes that show, you know, one person or two people together? Are there jump cuts? Um, that is where, um, you know, you'll have one image, then it'll cut to another, then another, then another. And does the film use text, actually? And if so, what does the text say? You can also look for things like color and setting. Is this a film that is largely set in the outdoors versus the indoors? When scenes are set in the indoors, what do the interiors look like? Um, is it serene? Is it wealthy? Um, is it very poor? Is it an impersonal setting, like a corporate setting? And when a scene is set in the outdoors, what do the outdoors look like? Are we being shown um, urban landscapes or rural landscapes? Is it summer versus winter? Is the exterior environment dirty versus clean? Is it orderly or is it disorderly? Um, is it crowded or is it empty? And is it day versus night? All of these choices matter. A director or a producer has actually worked very, very hard um, to make sure that the film visually tells a story. And so what we do when we examine film is we actually look at the visual aspects, we look at the um, textual aspects, and ideally we examine these together. All right, and um, I will show you an example of how this works. 
So I'm going to switch over here to actually a clip of the movie um, Contagion. It's the opening scene. So what we see here before I even start is we notice that this is um, a pretty close-up scene. It's a pretty close-up shot. We see um, Gwyneth Paltrow, who plays Beth Emhoff. She is talking on her on her phone. Excuse me, the colors are really muted, right? The colors um, look green. It's clearly a kind of impersonal interior shot, and it seems as though the colors are almost kind of muted. So here's what she says. Thanks. All right, so she has now hung up the hung up the phone, um, and we see that the film is actually now focusing on her hands as she um, hands over her credit card, and then as the waitress takes the credit card. Here, what we have is we have some text it shows us um, population numbers for Hong Kong, and then it switches over to a man um, on the film who's on public transportation. All of these visual aspects matter. And we can talk about these visual aspects um, conveying meaning. And so when you talk about the film, you can talk about the film in a couple of ways. You can quote directly from the movie where you're listening to what the text says while transcribing it, um, or listen to what the film says while transcribing it. Um, so you can just use the quotations. You can um, talk about quotations from the movie while also explaining the scene. You can give a very detailed explanation of the scene, in particular, um, the part that you want us to pay attention to. So if I was talking about that opening sequence with Beth Emhoff, I would want to focus on how she's on the phone and we get this close-up of her face. It's in, the colors are really sort of greenish and, um, and dark, um, dark brown because they want us to, um, to kind of look at the ex interior as being almost, I, I would say maybe sickly or certainly corporate. The last thing you can do um, to draw our attention to the movie is to embed a video from the movie into your discussion board post, and I'm going to show you how you do that. All right, so here is my um, fake discussion board post. Let's say I want to embed that clip that I just showed you. What I would do is I would come over to click over to the clip. I'm going to highlight and copy and paste the URL, and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to um, click on this icon, which shows a chain link. It's a link to an, a URL. Um, the directions will ask you to paste or type a URL. So here I am going to copy and paste the address, and I'm going to insert the link. And when I hit post reply, this link will actually um, embed itself, and it'll give us a little thumbnail of, um, of the scene itself. Okay, so... Now that we have some advice for how we're supposed to talk about the film and a little bit of understanding of the film and its critical response, I want to turn over to the discussion board. I've posed a series of questions and I'm really interested to hear what your response is. Um, I'm looking forward to discussing this movie with you and I'll see you in a few minutes.